Ooh, what's happening, everyone? In this video, I'll be taking a look at what's definitely the worst sorting algorithm we've covered thus far. That's right. There's actually a sorting algorithm that's even worse than bubble sort and selection sort, and it's called the BOGO sort. If you haven't seen the other lessons in this series, in the beginning of this video, we'll cover the basics and the underlying methodology of the algorithm. And later, we'll open up a coding editor and actually implement BOGO sort using the Python coding language. As always, throw me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video or find it informative and consider subscribing if you'd like to stay up to date on the rest of my Python code and content. So the idea behind BOGO sort is essentially that if we just keep shuffling our input array, we'll have to, given infinite time, eventually come to the point where it's sorted. This would effectively be the same as if you planned on sorting a deck of cards by throwing it in the air, picking up the cards at random, and repeating the process until the entire deck was sorted. You should immediately realize that this approach is complete lunacy, and not surprisingly, the name for the BOGO sort comes from the word bogus and is also sometimes called the stupid sort, or monkey sort. <laughs> well, that's assuming monkeys are stupid, and I'm sure they'd be pretty offended if they heard that. In practice, there are two distinct forms of BOGO sort. The first is basically what we've just described, where we essentially just shuffle the deck on each iteration and check to see if it's sorted. The second approach may be a bit more intelligent, in that it enumerates all the possible permutations, or number of ways the array can be shuffled, thereby preventing itself from testing the same random shuffle twice. Because both approaches are so terrible, we're just going to stick with the first approach for simplicity, but if you'd like to see a video covering the enumerated version, just drop a comment below and I'll get started working on it. As we can see on this slide, the efficiency for the BOGO sort is, not surprisingly, terrible. In the best possible case, we see linear time complexity, similar to insertion of bubble sort, but the only way this would ever occur would be if we were just past a sorted array as the input. Then we see the linear time complexity because we still have to iterate over each element to ensure the array is actually sorted. In the average case, we see n plus 1 factorial time complexity, which comes from the fact there's n factorial different permutations possible for a set of n items. The plus 1 again comes from the fact we need to check after each shuffle has been performed to see if the array has actually been sorted, requiring n steps on each iteration. I'll go back, but just for comparison, on this slide we can see just how bad factorial fares against even exponential time complexity. Essentially, unless our input array is very tiny, BOGO sort will take an unbelievable amount of time to complete. After we've coded it up, we'll run some tests to try to find the maximum input array size we can sort using BOGO sort within a reasonable time span. Because BOGO sort doesn't necessarily progress towards a solution as it runs, we can't definitely say we'll ever finish sorting the array, so in the worst case it gets an infinite time complexity. Take note though, most of the time we'll tend to see the average case, and the worst case would only really show up if we were trying to sort an array that would take longer to complete than we actually have time in the universe. On the other hand, BOGO sort runs on linear space complexity, so it has at least that going for it. This value would likely depend completely on how you achieve the shuffling operation on each iteration, so I'm sure it depends greatly on the specific implementation. Despite its disqualifyingly bad characteristics, BOGO sort is sometimes taught in school simply to serve as an example of what not to do when trying to formulate an algorithm. In essence, it's one of the best examples of why brute force solutions are normally avoided, but it's an idealistically bad algorithm, and I don't think anyone in their right mind would ever actually think to use it in practice. We'll now switch over to a coding editor and implement the BOGO sort using Python. So now that we have our coding editor open, before we write the actual BOGO sort function, we'll have to implement some small helper functions. We'll first be carrying over our create array method from the prior sorting videos. Past two integer parameters, create array will construct an array of length equal to the size parameter, where each integer element is selected randomly from zero up to the max parameter. We'll be using this function to create randomized arrays we can pass as input to our BOGO sort to ensure it's sorting correctly. The next function, called isSorted, will be used exclusively inside of our BOGO sort algorithm to check after each iteration to see if the array has been sorted. It will simply iterate over each pair of consecutive elements to check and see if any are in unsorted order. It will return true if the array is sorted, and false if not. We now have everything we need to actually write the BOGO sort function. BOGO sort will be passed a single parameter, the array we wish to sort. Inside the function, we'll first initialize an integer variable named count, which we'll use to keep track of the number of iterations we use before sorting the array. We'll then enter into a while loop, where we'll continue iterating until the array is sorted. Inside the while loop, we'll shuffle the input array using the built-in shuffle method of the random module, and increment our count variable to signify we've used another iteration. At the end of the while loop, once we know our input array has been sorted, we'll return both the number of iterations performed, as well as the sorted array. We'll now write some helper code to ensure the function is working properly. Switching to terminal, we can see our BOGO sort function correctly returned a sorted array and reported taking a total of 41 iterations. 
It was also pretty quick, but don't be fooled into thinking Bogosaur is a good algorithm. We'll see soon enough that that's far from the truth. The only thing left to do is try to figure out how our Bogosort algorithm fares against larger input array sizes. To do this, we'll iterate over ever-increasing input array sizes until we reach a point where the algorithm is unsuitable, simply because it takes an unreasonable amount of time to complete. We'll create a dictionary named times to hold our input array sizes, as well as the time taken to complete the sorting procedure for each size. We'll then set a cutoff time where, if the algorithm takes longer than this, in our case 3 seconds, to sort an array, we'll end the benchmark. We'll then import the time function from the time module to allow us to record the duration of each BOGO sort function call. We'll now iterate over input array sizes starting at length 2 and continuing until we reach either an array of length 100 or we quit after using more than the allotted cutoff time. For each size, we'll create the array using our createArray function and record the duration of the BOGO sort algorithm into our times dictionary. At the end, we'll print out the results in a table format for easy comparison. Now, using the magic of video editing, we can fast forward, but I had to sit through this thinking it would only take a couple seconds. I was under the impression the time would slowly increase as we increased the array size, so, for example, if an array of length 10 ended up taking like 10 seconds, our cutoff would end the benchmark early, but that was definitely not what happened. As you can see, up to an input of length 12 or so, our algorithm was actually fairly quick. Obviously nowhere near as quick as merge sort or quick sort, or even bubble sort, but still less than a second. Once we hit a length of 13, though, our algorithm jumped up to taking nearly 10 full minutes before it could sort the array. This just goes to show that BOGOSort, because it doesn't procedurally work towards a solution, has a huge standard deviation, or variance, in the amount of time it takes to complete. So that takes us to the end of this video, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it and now understand the drawbacks to even considering using BOGOSort in a real-world application. We'll be posting some more interesting data structures and algorithms videos in the coming weeks, so definitely hit that subscribe button if you'd be interested in seeing some of those. And if you are subscribed, consider dropping a comment if you'd like to request any algorithms or data structures to cover in future videos. And I'll see you guys next time.